More now on the U.S. Bishop's big meeting in Baltimore and our special coverage. America Magazine is a top Jesuit journal published around the world. The Rome edition is run by Father Antonio Spadaro, a very close advisor to the Pope here in New York. Kevin Clark is the magazine's senior editor, and he joins me now. Kevin, thank you so much for being with us. Well, thank you. Thank you for inviting Let America Media us, uh, today. Oh, please. Let's dive right into this one. We have been discussing at length throughout our program today the Vatican's decision to call on the U.S. bishops to delay those rules on new uh, that would cover the conduct in the midst of the clerical abuse crisis. I got to ask you, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I think uh, like a lot of uh, journals who cover the Holy See and cover mm -hmm. the American Church, we were all completely, uh, I think uh, Greg Erlander from Catholic News Service put it best, or at least their headline today, uh, gobsmacked. Um, mm -hmm. That decision, which apparently was also a great shock to Cardinal DiNardo and you know the entire U.S. Bishops Conference, came out of nowhere this morning. I was on my way to, uh, to work and I got a, a, an alert from my, uh, for our correspondent in uh, Baltimore, Michael O'Loughlin, who said, hold on, the, you know, the bishops are, have been told by, by Rome not to vote on these protocols that we've all been anticipating. We, we're all anticipating this being the, the centerpiece discussion mm -hmm. at this, this fall conference. All of a sudden, all our editorial plans and all of their plans were completely in an uproar, uh, and we just rushed to get some sort of uh, coverage out as quickly as possible. Kevin, obviously you have been covering this at length. Um, how has the news about all of this been handled so far by both the Vatican and by U.S. bishops? Well, I would love to say that this is uh, an un unusually um, incompetent display from, mm. from both parties, but we've been here before. Uh, the, the Vatican has a notoriously poor communications uh, facade. I mean, mm -hmm. they're, they're constantly uh, wrong footing on what should be, you know, fairly normal communications protocols, what procedures. What do you think is behind that? I'm not sure. Uh, they've, they've been hiring a lot of professionals, a lot of communications mm -hmm. professionals in recent years to try and improve their performance, and yet we still end up with um, a very poor uh, lack of transparency, surprise decisions, uh, that are never quite explained. So this is a perfect example. Mm -hmm. Because the uh, Holy See did not explain why this happened, the void is being filled with all sorts of conspiracy theories and all sorts of guessing and speculation. No one has any information, and yet it could be something that probably could be very easily explained if someone would do so in Rome. And so now we wait. We have people from all over the Catholic Church, from prelates to lay people, that they really wanted to see, as you've mentioned, some kind of action with regard to this case. Now we have to wait until February. Yeah. Wise move by the Vatican? I think it would have been wise to come out immediately and say, we, we need to halt this process now, and here's why. I, I think there's any number mm -hmm. of valid reasons for them to be concerned. Uh, you know, talking about having lay people put over the, uh, the Episcopal conferences for in charge of bishops, they're controlling their accountability. Mm -hmm. it, it probably makes the global church, the Episcopacies around the world, very nervous. Kevin, I got to get this in in the time that we have left. You write that the McCarrick scandal was quickly converted into a broad challenge to the leadership of Pope Francis. Mm -hmm. What will it take? for people to finally believe that the Holy Father is not only meeting this challenge, but doing his best to surmount it. We have about 30 seconds. Well, I think, uh, as the Pope says, he's got to confront the, the, the sin, the, 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 the structural sin of clericalism, and, and just break that hole it has over the church with, with transparency and real accountability. When bishops do wrong, they should be held, held accountable for it, mm -hmm. and those, those wrongdoings should be uh, brought to light immediately. Kevin, I really thank you for your perspective on this. This is a tough story, and I'm sure we'll have you back. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.